Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Spencer and Trina checked into an opulent hotel room with a view of the scene in Paris, France. Trina was astounded by the space. For the next phase of their lives, Spencer and Trina deserved nothing but the finest, he remarked. Trina shared a kiss with Spencer. Spencer spoke to Trina in French after the hotel staff left the room with a request, and he joked that he would be pleased to teach her the language. Yes? What exactly are you going to teach me? Gazing intently into Spencer's eyes, Trina spoke a murmur. As soon as Spencer grabbed the remote control, love songs started to play. Spencer and Trina wrapped their arms around each other's waists and exchanged hushed French words. After giving Trina a few kisses on the lips and neck, Spencer and her soon started undressing. Trina and Spencer approached the bed and made love. Spencer then suggested a champagne toast, and the hotel clerk reappeared out of the blue. Spencer apologized for interrupting, and the clerk gave him the electrical converter he had asked for before leaving. As Trina made light of the fact that she nearly got caught in the act, Spencer promised to put a do not disturb sign on the door the next time. Oh, there's gonna be a next time, huh? Trina made fun of it. Yes, that's right. Yes, and there will be another one, and another, and still another, Spencer remarked, giving Trina a tender kiss. Spencer saw Trina's turtle dove nearby. When Spencer showed Trina his turtle dove, she was pleased, and he confessed that he always carried it with him. When Spencer promised to put the turtle dove on his bedside table after he secured an apartment in Paris, Trina was moved. Trina and Spencer shared another kiss. Spencer's cell phone rang. Laura told Spencer over the phone that Esmond had been tracked by the authorities to Canada. Laura noted that the idea of a full ocean between Esmond, Spencer, and Trina gave her peace. Trina instructed Spencer to board a trip back to New York to be with his family when the call concluded. Taking Trina by the hands, Spencer tried to convince her that he should be in Paris with her. Now, Trina Robinson, are you ready for the best weekend of your life? As he uncorked the champagne bottle, Spencer chuckled. So ready, grinned Trina. As they got ready to spend their first night together in the city of love, Spencer and Trina shared a kiss. Laura begged Anna to come back to the PCPD at the hospital. When Anna stated that she couldn't accept Laura's offer, she did so firmly. Portia came over with Kevin's latest news. Portia informed Laura, Anna, and Jordan that the doctors were hopeful Kevin would recover. After giving Laura a hug, Jordan and Anna announced that they had to head out for appointments. Laura revealed to Portia a short while later that she had been aware of Esme's potential threats. Portia stated that she had never thought Esmond had actually changed and that Esmond had never accepted responsibility for her misdeeds. At last, Laura conceded that Esmond ought to go on trial. In pursuit of Esmond, Dante and Chase simultaneously materialized in a Toronto apartment building's hallway. An officer from the Toronto Police Department met them and informed them that there was a person inside the apartment. Dante reached for his revolver cautiously. Dan remarked, there might be trouble, as the three guys were ready to go inside. Sam informed Elizabeth at the courthouse that she had discovered Muldoon visiting a medical pavilion on camera before he had even met Finn. Sam went to investigate an other lead that might be of use to Finn. As Finn approached the courtroom, he was calmed by Elizabeth, Gregory, and Martin. The trial was called to order by a judge. Diane questioned Finn while he was testifying and he defended his choices regarding Muldoon's care. Finn became enraged quickly and declared that it was absurd for a physician practicing in a different specialty to, to identify every issue with a patient. Martin questioned Finn's authority to make a patient undergo a test they didn't want to have done during the cross-examination. Finn claimed not to have, and he was released. The judge declared a recess after Diane concluded the prosecution's case. Sam came back with documentation, proving the Muldoon's properties were subject to many liens from debt collectors. Sam stated that when Aurora's stock fell 18 months prior, 
the Muldoon family had made significant investments in the company. Finn claimed to have been the target of a setup effort. Brick saw Sonny and Ava at his penthouse and informed them that he had linked an unmarked gun recovered in Ava's apartment to a stolen batch of firearms from the Dell USB. It was evidence, Sonny thought, that the gun was linked to the rifle that was used in the shooting at Metro Court the summer before. Ava guessed that the person who had murdered Austin was also the shooter at Metro Court. Sonny inquired as to Brick's belief regarding the connection between the shooting and the unidentified bid on Windermere. Ava consented to share with Brick the details she knew about the shell company that made an offer for Windermere. Brick was instructed by Sonny to increase his family's monitoring when Ava left the room. Should Nina be added to the list? Brick inquired. Brick gave in to Sonny's smug assertion that Nina was legally his wife and allowed her to join the security detail. Ava came back with what she knew about Windermere. After Brick departed, Ava inquired about the severity of the threat to her and Sonny's family, pointing out that living in the penthouse together would not be beneficial for either of them. On that note, what do you say we get the hell out of here? Ava put forth the idea. Valentin discovered Nina by a loan at a table at Charlie's pub and inquired about her well-being. Valentin made Nina grin, then proceeded to congratulate her on her accomplishments at Crimson, which was a flattering gesture. Valentin offered to help Nina start a rival publication to take on Carly and Drew. Valentin continued by saying that he would give Nina the money to steal every employee from Crimson. Valentin's proposition piqued Nina's interest, and at that moment Sonny and Ava appeared. When Nina tried to inquire about Spencer and Ace, Sonny was cold toward her. It was none of Nina's concern, Sonny said. Valentin greeted Nina at her table and asked if she wanted to go somewhere else. Nana declared that she would not submit to being run off. Valentin declared that he still stood by his financial pledge to Nana. If Nana hoped to keep any prospect of a relationship with Willow alive, she would have to learn to restrain her urges. Valentin concurred, but he gave Nana some parting remarks. For a very long time, you and I have been tying ourselves up in knots and acting different from who we really are. With me, you don't have to do that. No matter what, I'm on your side, declared Valentin. Simultaneously, Sunny noticed Nina covering Valentin's hand at the adjacent bar. Sunny turned to face Ava and proposed that, in order to avoid whatever was after them, they go to Sunny's own island in Puerto Rico. Sunny merely wanted to get out of town so he could be away from Nina, Ava mocked. Brick went to the hospital to meet Jordan after leaving Sunny's penthouse. Brick claimed to have located a cell phone tower close to Pentonville after tracking down a private number that had made an attempt to contact Jordan's phone a few nights prior. After Brick had left, Anna came to join Jordan. Jordan pondered over the possibility of a new prisoner at Pentonville, learning about a shipment of unregistered firearms intended for the WSB. Jordan and Anna concluded that John Brennan had to be the person. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.